we continue with Psalm 86, verses 10 through 12, giving thanks for God's personal blessing. Verse 10 of 86 reads, For you are great and do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. All nations shall honor the God of Jacob as the true God, renouncing that which they hold as idols or in idolatry. This belief and hope are a constant theme throughout the entire volume of revealed truth that we call our Bible. All that God has created inspires a wondrous inquisition from the smallest marvel to the extent of the integrated cosmos, whether a flower blossoming or the maturing fruit of autumn, things which lie beyond the power of any natural created entity. Therefore, like King David, we should be benevolently intolerant when we are confronted with the human error of preaching Christ as only one of several ways to salvation. Jesus testified in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father except through me. Therefore, it is God alone that saves. Verse 11 of Psalm 86 reads, Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. The Lord Jesus never needed to pray a prayer like this because he came from the Father to do the Father's will. You and I, on the other hand, can certainly apply this passage to ourselves. We need to be taught God's way and his truth. Our hearts need to be united to fear his name and to walk in his way. What is the truth? Jesus identified the word of God as the real truth. Dr. McGee quotes F.W. Grant, who makes the following remarkable statement. This indeed is what everywhere the great lack among the people of God. How much of our lives are not spent in positive evil, but frittered away and lost in countless petty divisions, diversions, which spoil effectually the positiveness of our testimony for God. How few can say with the Apostle Paul, this one thing I do. We are on the road or at least not intentionally off of it. But we, too, often stop to chase butterflies among the flowers, making no serious progress. How Satan must wonder when he sees us turn away from the kingdoms kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. When realized as his temptation, and yet yield ourselves with scarce little thought to endless trifles, lighter than a thistle down for a child, for which a child spends all of his strength, and we laugh at him. If we examine our lives carefully in such interest as this, how we would realize the multitude of needless anxieties or self-imagined duties of permitted relaxations of innocent trifles, which incessantly divert us from that which in which alone is profit. How few, perhaps, would care to face such an examination day by day of the unwritten history of their lives. There are many Christian workers today, while they do not function openly in sin, they fail miserably to mature and allow God to develop the gifts of the Spirit in their lives. We can read from 1 Corinthians 12, a paraphrased list of these gifts, beginning in verse 7. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by one Spirit. The list goes on to include apostles, prophets, and teachers. God's Spirit had Peter record this in 1 Peter 4.10. Based on the gift that each one has received, use it to serve others as good managers of the very great, the varied grace of God. Verse 12 of Psalm 86 reads, I will give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with all my heart and will glorify your name forever. In giving thanks, David is simply repeating the idea found in the previous verses. We should follow David's example. Praise should never be rendered with less than our entire person, body, soul, and spirit, 
or it will be both unreal and unacceptable. If anything can make a man pray and praise, it is the confident knowledge that the Lord is his God. Since God has never done blessing us, let us never be done blessing him and giving him the glory due. David writes that nothing will divide or distract his attentions from his creator and that he will withhold nothing from his from the God that he loves and adores.